If you're new to our channel, my partner Adam and I and our dog Tyler have been traveling part-time around Australia for the last two years. So to check out all our past episodes and all our episodes in the future, make sure you go down the bottom and like and subscribe. I'm King Dino and on this episode, I am solo camping and I've come to, I think it's called Firth, Firth? Um, <laughs> campground. It's a free campground. I'll pop the name here because I probably have no idea. And um, it is in a forest and I'll have to find out where that is too. A friend recommended this spot. I literally headed down straight after work. <laughs> on a friday night and i'm here now like i said by myself it's pretty cool it's getting dark so i'll show you around the campground tomorrow but before it does get dark this is what you can see there is some really nice spots down lower um but i missed out on those because there are people here already there is another spot i could have chosen but that was a bit boggy so i am come up a bit higher where the water runs down so you don't i am going to be on a bit of a lean which is a bit of a shame but um at least that way i shouldn't get bogged fingers crossed uh also the drive in was absolutely beautiful it was about a 20 minute drive through the forest um i come across a wombat and uh i've never seen a wombat walking across the road i've only seen the dead ones but <laughs> it was really cute and then also uh, there was a wallaby or kangaroo. Um, it was like a dark one. It was only small and that hopped past me as well. So just take it easy, especially if you're coming in on dusk like I did. Um, you can run into little furry friends along the way and you don't want one ending up on your bull bar. Anyway, <laughs> now let me get set up. Uh, let me chuck on something warm and uh, let me get out my campfire pit because I'm gonna be cooking something pretty special tonight. Okay, so I'm all set up now and um, I'll take you inside and show you what I'm gonna whip up for dinner. So I brought my, the, well, the pit kit with me. Now, if you haven't seen this episode, I'll link it in at the end. It's a must see episode. Wait till you see this baby. Um, I'm gonna set this up now. I would have liked to show you properly how to set this up, but it's a bit dark to show you, but maybe tomorrow I can show you. Um, but I'll get it on the table and we'll see how we go. Now, if you haven't guessed already, it is a fire pit um, that actually says King Dino's Adventures on the side and also has our branding on the other side. So I'll whip this together. It all just slides in. It is so cool. It weighs a bit. Um, so you can see how thick it is. But the best part about that is it doesn't buckle um, like the cheaper ones do. Okay, I'm up to the last piece. So I'll go pop it in. No, it goes around this way. And it's good because, because of the words on there, you know which way, if it's going in the right way or not. And um, just putting the last bit in, as you can see. Okay, so it's all ready. Look how hot this looks. Looks so good. King Dino's Adventures. And then that's the side part. Now, if you're wondering what I'm cooking tonight, I am going to be doing pork on the spit. I've got one of these. I've never used it before. So that's the standard thing that you buy from Bunnings or wherever. But the part I needed to be able to use this feature, which I've never been able to use, and I've, like I said, never cooked a spit before, is this, which I can connect up to my pit and um hopefully in the next hour i'll be starting to cook my pork i really do hope you don't have to be an expert at doing this because <laughs> like i said never done it before all right i've made this thing of a jiggy and uh they've made it really simple to use so well hopefully it's hopefully it's simple so i've popped on this and that's just slide it in there and then you've got one on this side like that so i just pop that in there and then across here you've got this little part that just fits into here and done now the big test let's press go yes we have movement all right see who said I couldn't do this? There we go. Now we just need some heat in there and get our meat on. 
Oh, oh, it stopped already. Okay, that's not a good sign. Oh no, it came out. I pulled it out. It's okay, everyone. Don't panic. Don't panic. It's moving. All right, looks like someone's got their chainsaw out. Now I'm just using these tonight and I'm gonna get them all fired up with a bit of this. So hopefully this works. I've seen my brother do it before. Let's hope I can. Now we've got one of the biggest pieces of <laughs> five stars in my life. And then and light that baby up, but I'll gather them up and then I'll push them out later once they're nice and hot. We've lit, lit it up, now we'll just get all of them on top so they get nice and hot. So here is my pork. I'm just gonna cut this open now. Um, pretty much just gonna oil it and put rub it with a whole heap of salt. And then I'm gonna stick it on that uh, skewer and pop it on and let it start cooking. Uh, I think it's every 500 grams is about 45 minutes to cook. So it's going to take a little while. It's going to be, I'll be eating at midnight the way I'm going. So we'll chuck a bit of oil over top. Some salt. Then massage that through. Again, I'm going to leave the string on for now. And um, yeah, we'll cut that off later. Right, as you can see, I've made a big mess with the salt. Now I need to skewer this. So here goes, let's see. Let's see how I go. Uh. <laughs> All right, we're through, we're through, we're through. And now I'm just gonna spike it as good as I can with this spike. Well, I got it on the spit, it's on there now. So I'll have to take this outside. It's gotta make sure that it's ready for it. Um, and now, the meat's not big enough for all four of these to go into it each side. So I've at least got two in. So when it turns, it's not going to spin on the spot. I've added quite a few starter fire starters, I mean. And uh, yeah, I think it's slowly doing the trick. And I might have accidentally uh, popped in the cardboard that they came in in there too. Oops. But, <laughs> but I think it's working. I think I can get my meat on very soon. Now, I am a novice at this. Like I said earlier, never done it before. And the fire starters were just not giving me enough heat. So I've gone and thrown some uh, bit of wood in there. Just a little bit. Um, <laughs> and hopefully this works. It's going pretty well so far, so fingers crossed, I can bloody get my meat on there soon. I don't know if this will be too hard to see, but you can see that one there has gone white. That's how I want them to be, so that is good. So it's starting to work. Oh, hallelujah. It is ready to go on. Now I might have to move the um, coals a little bit once it's actually on, but we'll see how we go. So that's in and here we go so let's see now that it's got the weight on there if it's gonna turn oh there we go I think I'll be eating at 12 o'clock at night but that's okay it's on even though it is a very cold night it's absolutely stunning and there is a full moon out, even though it looks like there's someone shining a spotlight at me. No, that's a full moon. And uh, I think it's going to be a nice night. Well, I've just come inside and thrown my jacket on. It is freezing, like I just said before. <laughs> it's so cold tonight. Adam will be so happy that he's not here because he would be so cold. He feels the cold so much more than me. And if I'm cold, you know it's cold. Trust me. So I've got my jacket on, I've got my hoodie. Oh, merch time. So yes, you can get your King Dino Adventures hoodie. Um, but yeah, that's staying under here tonight because I'm freezing. But, so tonight, what am I doing with this pork? Let me get some ingredients out and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing. 
So tonight I'm going to be making Asian pork rolls. These are some of the things you'll need to make these. I won't go through the whole thing. You can see what it is. This is brown sugar. This is vinegar. And you'll see in one minute what that is actually for. By the way, I've got our heater happening because it's so cold. This hopefully will warm up the van. And by the time I come in tonight, it hopefully will be warm in here. Anyway, let's get started on these carrots because we're going to pickle the carrots. They're going to pickle for one hour and then by then, hopefully, our meat will be ready. You're going to need four carrots and I've peeled them and now we're going to cut them really fine. Now they're sliced really fine. We're just going to pop them into a bowl. Then add one tablespoon of salt, one over three cups of brown sugar, half a cup of vinegar, and last, one cup of water. Give it a good mix, and then leave it for one hour. We'll finally cut our cucumber, and also our chili. So I've come outside to check on the meat. It's not looking quite ready yet. Still got a while to go, but that's all right. I've got an idea. It just happens to be that tonight, Kylie Minogue is releasing her new single, well, it's her second single, off her new album. So I'm going to go outside and start a new tradition because the last time I was by myself, I had a bit of a disco. I'm going to do that again, and I'm going to go check out Kylie Minogue's new film clip. Why my pork cooks? Uh, this pork, I tell you, I'm going to be eating at 12 o'clock at night, and I'm not joking. Well, I just had so much fun, all by myself. But anyway, <laughs> don't tell anyone. Look how, I'm like blowing steam. Anyway, it is that cold and it is that late now. I'm not even gonna tell you the time it is, but that meat is just about ready. So what I need to do is cut my rolls and start getting ready to stuff them full of pork. It's optional, but first I'm going to butter my roll. I think it's time to take the meat off. I've got a little bit of crackling, um, but at the same time, there's bits that are burnt and there's bits that aren't cooked so well. But the meat definitely will be cooked. So I'm going to take this off, cut it up, and uh, if I can salvage some of the crackling, I will. But otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm just tasting a little bit of the crackling and uh, we'll see how it tastes. Mm. So good. Got it inside and now I'm just going to get it off this. So I'm going to start unscrewing these and pull that out and then I'll chop it up and we'll see what we end up with. This has turned out so so good. Look how nice this is looking. Look at that. Beautiful. Whew, I'll be taking a lot of this home. You can still see the heat coming off it. Wow. Anyway, back to this roll. We've buttered it so far. That's about it. So let's start layering it. We just want to go in with some carrots. Just pop them on the bottom. Then we want to go and chuck some meat on. Then some of our cucumber. Then you just want to put a bit of uh, coriander on there. Then just pop some chilies in there if you want to. You don't have to. I want to try to get them in there. I'm running out of room. It's so much on here. Last but not least, we just want to add in our little bit of mayo, as much or as little as you want, and we're done. And there you have it. There is our Asian pork roll. All right, it might have taken all night, but I'm finally here. I'm going to take a bite of this and uh, I'll let you know what it tastes like, but I'm definitely not doing it on camera because... 
yeah, you can already tell. It's going to go everywhere. Three bites in, and it's absolutely fantastic. Love it. Coming into the warmer weather, this is a great dinner idea. Light, easy, summery, light, loving the taste. The pickled uh, carrots turned out awesome and really made a big difference. Otherwise, if you just wanted to do a cheaty version, you could just get a bit of coleslaw mix, pop it on there with your pork, and you're done. So anyway, I'm going to go and enjoy this. I'm going to head off to bed, and in the morning, I'm going to show you around this free campsite and tell you a little bit about it and whip up a yummy breakfast. Looks like I'm the first one up this morning. A lot of tents here, a lot of tents. Having my coffee. And I think I spotted a kookaburra. Well, did you see that? It was very quick. <laughs> as soon as I started filming, it flew off. But anyway, what I might do is finish my coffee and then I'll take you for a walk around this campground um, while everyone's asleep and so I can show you different setups and uh, different campsites. The best one is down the front. It's the very first site you see on your left as you drive in and uh, it's right on the water. It looks so cool, but I missed out on that one. But this is okay. I'll show you mine right now while I'm having my coffee. So this is where I am and um, it's a bit on the angle. <laughs> so it goes down and then it just keeps going down and sloping down even further where all those people are down there. So probably not, not the most ideal spot, but uh, it did me okay. So I've walked down to the front of the park. So this is it here. You got a sign there saying tenting, there's toilets. You can bring your horses down here. There's fire pits. You just gotta make sure your fire is uh, in a fire pit. And um, yeah, this is the front. It does one big loop. So here's the water here. And um, basically you head down this way and it brings you back around through here. So it's just one big loop. So let's go see the first campsite. And uh, I'll show you the water also. How gorgeous is this? This looks so pretty. Imagine camping down along here. Unfortunately, I missed out on that. But that brings me to the very first camping spot, which is just behind the tree. And then there's one up a bit further. I didn't know it then, but I actually knew the guy that was at this campsite in that four-wheel drive, but you'll see him later in the episode. So this is the middle part of the park. So you can actually walk into this area and camp in here where there's tables and fire pits. So this is one of the fire pits. And the trees just look so amazing. Look at them. How nice does this look? Someone just camped there. There's an information board there, but I'll come back later and look at that. Um, and then the toilets are just up there, but we'll go walk past them in a second. You know, we'll to keep heading around. This campsite number two up here. So this is just a sign saying you've got the camping area and the horse um, area. Just up there. You've got this nice spot over here. And it looks like here they've rebuilt a brand new, or fixed it up, um, horse area. So you can pop your horse in here while you're camping, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, yeah, little pens. One, two, three, four, five, six. You could fit a few horses in there. Bit of grass. 
Yes, that's nice. So now I'm at the top of the park and um, again, that was the last campsite we saw. And then up here are the drop toilets. So you got two there and then you got another two in the middle of the park over here. All right, I'm going to cut through the middle now to get back to where I'm camping, which is just over there. But how magical does this look? Looks so pretty with these trees. People have, like, just camped in the middle around here. And uh, imagine waking up to this. Here's another undercover area with a table, a fire pit. That's cool. So if you're in a tent, you can enjoy these kind of spots. But obviously I can't drive in here, and I'll let her bring your car in here. So that's why I am over there. Before we head back, I thought I'd just show you down here. So this is a whole heap of camp spots. So you can see all along here, but they're all pretty much on an angle. There's a couple little straight bits there and there where those people are. These people are all parked here, but they're camping inside the i'll call it the roundabout <laughs> um so it's very similar to mount franklin i suppose because but there's just more trees in the middle because it's just one big loop um and wherever you can fit in you can camp so you could camp here but um but yeah a lot of mud at the moment a lot of mud that's definitely why i decided to go up here because i knew all the water would run down and the ground was going to be harder up here Okay, now that I've turned you around, it's time to have some breakfast. So I'm whipping out my Jaffa line and I've come up with an idea that I think will change your life forever. No, I'm only joking. It's not that exciting. <laughs> but I have come up with a really good idea, quick and easy. If you've got a family and you haven't got time to making a whole heap of Jaffles, well, let's see if this works, what I've got come up with. All right, I've just lit in my fire in my fire pit and uh i'm just warming my jaffel iron up and just getting that nice and hot and i'll head into the van and i'll show you what i'm going to get up to so the idea i've come up with was this mccain's pizza pockets what an awesome idea just chuck them in your jaffel iron and pop them in and in no time you're going to have breakfast made when you're out camping and you just want to be lazy what a great quick easy idea if you've got a family this is cool you can have breakfast done for everyone in no time now the pit kit also you can get these crossbars which are bloody awesome right so i'm going to head over and put them on now so then i can rest the Jaffa Lion on top of the crossbars so it's not actually in the actual fire itself. So it's as easy as getting it and just popping it in where they've actually custom put the little slots and that's it and then we'll put the other side on and as you can see the best part is it's all adjustable so I can depending on where I want this to sit I can move this grid pattern along and uh yeah, it just makes it easier. See, just as simple as that. Uh, and also, if I wanted to, I could put a flat plate on this and I could, could cook a barbecue and have sausages on here, steak. How awesome is this? God, I love my pit kit. Look at that, King Dino's Adventures. All right, I'm just gonna give this a really quick spray, nothing too much. Then in goes my Look how perfectly these fit. Look how perfect these fit. Oh my God, I love it. How awesome is that? Now let's throw these in and see how they turn out. All right, this is looking good. So I'm just going straight on and we're done. Well, I think it's about to see if my plan worked. 
And if this is a good idea, let's have a look. This looks incredible. How awesome is this? Look how perfect they are. Like normally you get such a big mess when you're having the, like a jaffle, where you have stuff coming out the sides. Look how clean, neat. You're ready to cook another one now. How awesome. They're nice and hot. Even though I am touching my hands, I must have no feelings in my hands because it's that cold. But uh, let's give one a taste. I've still got the other one on there, it's keeping warm, just off the fire. Now to give this a go. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like a bakery. Mmm. <laughs> the stringy cheese. Yum. What an awesome idea for a breakfast. It's cooked absolutely perfect. This, I'm definitely doing this again. And I've got a feeling Adam is going to love this. And it's so clean, like, no mess. Just, I can hold it in my hands, eat it. Your kids can do that. And uh, you're laughing. Well, this is definitely one of those situations where I can actually say, Arm ah, Keynes, you've done it again. <laughs> now it sounds like I'm in a commercial. <laughs> Well, that was delicious. Now I need a third coffee for the day. You can still see all the steam coming out of my mouth. But it's not too, it's not too, actually too cold, but oh well. Um, but the reality of camping on a slope, you want to see the reality of it? Your water might not go down your sink. So I'm going to have to manually chop all this water out, unless I move, but I don't want to move and um, then I can do my dishes from last night, which I didn't do. And uh, anyway, oh, but wait a second. Kettle's boiled, her coffee for the day. Now the sun's come out, it's um, feeling on, it's getting warmer every second. When I say warmer, I'm talking minuscule warmer, but it is a lot nicer. I've taken my jacket off and I feel comfortable. So, and I think um, I'm gonna finish my coffee, lock up the van, and I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk in two. The um, forest, because uh, they've um, been cutting down trees and things. Um, they had a lot of trees through those rainy periods through winter in Victoria. A lot of trees came down because the soil was so wet. And um, they've only just recently cleaned this place up and got it all ready. So people can camp this summer here. And uh, yeah, so plenty of wood here. If you had a chainsaw, there's heaps of wood on the ground at the moment. I'll, anyway, I'll show you that when I go and walk, but I'll just finish my coffee. Now, this is Kelly. Hello. How you been? Kelly the Kelpie. Kelly the Kelpie. And who have we got here? Shannon. Hey, how are you? Good. It's been a while. It has. Now, you've had a few new additions I to have. your four drive. Yeah, I thought it needed some, some must-haves. Yep. <clears throat> so I, I got to work and I built this frame for it inside the Pajero. Um, down here is the is the water tank area. Um, hopefully uh, it stays watertight for the for its life and it doesn't end up leaking because that'll be in a world of pain, I'm sure. Um, but it's working a treat so far. Um, it stores about 85 litres. About parcels. 85 litres, that's a lot of water. Yeah, stainless steel tank. Um, quality accessories, so yeah, hopefully it should be all right. And you, so you built the, yeah, built, everything's housing it? Yeah, apart from the stainless steel tank, uh, which I, I purchased, but everything else is, um, everything else I just did myself. Yep. And what are you powering it with? So, um, I think it's a shore pump. Yep. Um, and that, uh, that drives it to a tap at the back. So I suppose we'll just go and have a quick look at that. <clears throat> All right. So this is the back of it. Uh, so... The, the tap is actually in the corner, so we won't be able to see it until we, we roll this in. So I might as well just explain what this is first then. Yeah. So we've just got a, a shield for the um, for the stove setup, which extends out. Fantastic. Block um, that wind out. If it gets a bit heavy, you, you do have four legs that drop down to support it. Well, that's handy. Um, we've got some space there for prep. And then a, a fridge that slides out. Look at that. 45... 45 litres? 
Yep. Yeah, 45 litres, fridge or freezer, depending on which one you, which way you want to go. Okay. Um, it's a bit high, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm tall, so I can, I can see. Yeah, so it works for you. Yep. Works for me. I'm happy with it. Yeah, so that all slides, slides in, out the way, when you're ready to pack up. So, press together. Well, that's so simple. It's got these, it's got these little slots. Oh yeah, so you can house it in there. To get, to get it. Perfect. And there's that tap. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, and so it just turns Perfect. like a normal tap. Yeah. Um, it's got a, a little extension that comes out so that I don't fill the pajero up with yeah. water. <laughs> um, you wouldn't want to do that's, that. That's tucked away in there. And <clears throat> I've also got a hose as well, so if I need to put out a campfire or something, in a hurry, I can, yep. can do that. Do that. And um, it looks like you've got plenty of storage underneath. Yeah, so that that that's the frame there. Yep. Um, that holds the this, this system and also a drawer. That's, the, that's lockable, which is good. Under here, I've got the table, the foldable, foldable chair, tools. Um, Great setup. Ropes. Uh, and then what's this new addition? Yeah, so this is the newest addition. Have you christened it yet? That's the question. Um, it looks a bit clean. Yeah, I gave it a, a quick test run. So let's go. But it is, it is still very new. Um, now, Adam and I have got one of these, but it's pretty tiny. This looks quite large for an electric. Is this yeah. the biggest one you can kind of get? Do you reckon? Um, at the moment, I'd say yes. Um, Ego brand specializes in gardening equipment. So... You can't swap out the batteries for other tools, which a lot of people probably would like, especially tradies going camping. They'd probably want something like a Milwaukee or a Makita and then swap the batteries into other tools. Yeah. This you can't do because it's just for their equipment, just for their range, uh, which is restricted to gardening. Um, yeah, 57 volt, 5 amp, so it's got a bit of power. It'll, it's, I've seen a lot of reviews. It's They're all good. They seem to... Say that they, they it cuts just like a um, petrol power. Yep. So that's the reason why I forked out for this. I thought I might as well get a decent one instead of yeah. You'll pay it off in firewood in no time. Yeah. Well, I just got sick of carting the the wood around, taking up the space, and then also the the, the cost of firewood is very expensive. Yep. All right. So now, what are you sleeping in? Uh Oz tent at the moment, which sets up in no time, and I'll usually have that extending to. The bushwhacker warning. Now, we've had someone on our episodes with a bushwhacker before. Mm. Now, you're saying it's awesome because yeah. they loved it too. <laughs> uh, How far does yours extend? It's 270 yep. degrees. Um, I, I like it um, for, for what I... It, it is heavy, so it will make the it will make the vehicle top heavy. So, you got to realise that. Cause it's about 30 so, you kind of got to balance it out. It's 35 kilos. So, yeah, you, you can do that. You can try to balance out the top. Um, with another awning on the other side, perhaps, or just equipment, um, just to help a little bit, or upgrade your suspension because it, it is a, it is very boaty on the highway, yep. and it can get a bit scary. So that's the <clears> brand <throat> there. All right. Yeah, actually, I, I might do a, a bit of a shout out because there was a tear in the um, in the awning, and they re, they did a, a, repl a complete replacement. So, oh, I, well, um, that's and it, awesome. And it was fairly quick. The response from Bushwhacker. Uh, so I was pretty happy. Yeah, I'll have that. to tag her in this video because, um, like I said, second one we've had on our episode and only in the last few weeks. So they're getting popular. Pretty popular. Yeah, there's a few brands that do this sort of style um, awning. Um, the, the quality of the canvas is pretty damn good. Yep. Um, I'm enjoying that. And you can actually add walls to it via Velcro. Really simple, really easy. I've got the walls, but I probably won't put it up right now because. Yep. Uh, oh, for the sake of. Um, time constraints with the video but yeah you can you can encase the entire left hand side in in um, canvas uh, from the roof through to the, the walls the walls have um, windows and also entrances so yeah it's um it's a good setup once it's all up and with um, all these bits and pieces where's um what are you what are you actually powering your so in here is a 200 amp uh lithium battery oh. this is this is the main um Cut off switch here, the the power isolator. Right. Um, if I ever wanted to isolate the power, the power yep. completely, and just make the 
uh, the, the system dead. Um, and is that your power box just over there? Yeah, so that's All the, right, we'll, that's come, the, we'll go around and have a look at it. That's the control box. So while we're talking about, we're back at the back of the vehicle again. Oh, um, that. I've got, I've added some extras at the, at the rear. So while I'm cooking, I can power my phone and have my music or oh, put, it, put, put in my spotlight audio. into the 12 volt. Perfect. And it lights up so you can locate it at night. The control box, I'll let you get in there. Yep. So it's got a multitude of switches, a USB ports, fuses. It's got a <laughs> automatic charger, um, 20 amp. So you can plug in your solar panel, you can pl uh, and you can, or you can have your alternator running the the entire time. It's up to you. Fantastic. So you got your display there. Yeah, the display tells you the the health of the of the system, I suppose, and, and the percentage of the battery. Yep. Um, and then up here, you've got up here yourself a, a torch, magnetic torch oil. So if, if you so, grab that, it'll yep. just come off because it's magnetic. Oh, look at that! But it automatically charges when you put it back on. Fantastic! What a great idea! And yeah. I'm getting lots of love. I'm getting lots of love. <laughs> and then you've got your water gauge there, so you can check out where you're at with your water. It tells me how much. What have I got left? And yeah. then you've got this here, which is your, is that if you want to have a shower or toilet? Yeah, so if you want a bit of privacy, you can um, set up your, your screen. And then one of the things that um, we were talking about earlier when you got here was the your fire pit, fire pit because um, I'm using my pit kit and you're using a, what's this one? Um, it's like a, it's... a smoke they call them smoke. Yeah, it's a smoke low. Free. They call it a low smoke fire pit, um, and it's a double wall design. It's uh, you can you can Google this if you want. Um, just just Google gasifier stove. Yep. And it'll explain how it works, and um, it's it's just more efficient with burning 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 the emissions. Um, and it's quite lightweight too, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah, very lightweight. Very lightweight. Comes in three pieces. This is stainless steel, but it's still very light for steel. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I've been happy with it. Um, less smoke under the awning is the is quite good. Yeah. Quite useful. Um, and it's uh, yeah self feeding, so you don't have to muck around stoking it all the time. It's just uh, it's a set and forget basically. Yeah, right. sounds ideal. Yeah. It doesn't have a rotisserie though, like raw one. No. <laughs> No, I'm pretty happy with my pit kit over there. And it's done a good job last night. I think I think the uh, person cooking the roast didn't do the best job, but, the, <laughs> but well, what, it was good. What was it? What roast was it? It was a roast pork. Nice. Yeah. With the yeah. crackling? It, oh, it had a little bit of crackling. I didn't quite make all the crackling. I've got lighting systems as well. I've got a big oh, white yeah. bar on the front. That definitely makes a big difference when you're in thick bush. Yeah, um, doesn't have range on on the on the roads, but when you're in the bush, it really lights everything up, so you can see those roos. And this one, what do you that use that one for? That one's just your side light to check out uh, potential camping spots if you can't see in the dark. Fantastic! And you got a snorkel? Oh uh, yeah, the snorkel. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's actually it, I'll need to seal it because I've added the wiring through it. Ah, oh, okay. So yeah. I'm, I'm not going to be doing any river crossings until I do that. Yeah. But, but I've been through two tyres so far because of the age of the tyres. So whenever you go out camping and you're going somewhere, especially if you're going isolated, definitely make sure you get some good tyres that are fairly yeah. new. And there's your backlight, I see. Yeah. Yep. And then there's also lights on this little... Oh, DB. there you go. Good for reversing. If you want to know where you're going, I suppose. But I need it for the step, you see, to get up on top of ah, this. Ah, yeah. Because I actually get on top. Ah, yes, to be able to pull that down. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for giving us the update and uh, right. for doing this for us. Yeah, I want to give cool. you one of our oh, King nice. Dino Adventures cups. Yeah, cool. Mugs, there you go. That's awesome. You That's a cool, that. uh, cool looking mug. Yep, and you can scan for adventure on the side. <laughs> there you go, you can promote us on the road. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. So a handshake? Good girl. Aren't ya? So talented. Mm. <laughs> Let me kiss. Kiss, kiss. Oh. <laughs> Sit. Nice sit. Yes. Good girl. High five. High five. Good girl. Oh. <laughs> what you doing? So off they go for another adventure. And uh, I better go on that walk that I said I was going to go on. I just think that's incredible. I can't believe he's running to us again. Like, well, into me this time, but 
he met Adam and Twyla last time we were camping. Um, and he saw our van, he come over and I said, and he was showing me he, everything he's done to his full drive since the last time we saw him and how much of great setup he's got there. And I was like, I need to film this for our channel and show everybody. So yeah, he let me film, which obviously, and um, it was awesome. Now i am just come down and I'm walking a bit through the, through the bush here, um, through the Wombat State Forest. And yeah, they've cleared heaps of trees that have fallen down. They're just coming into smaller bits. So if you were staying here for the time being, there's a plenty of wood here. If you've got a chainsaw, you can get all this stuff that's on the ground, cut it up. Some of it looks all right. Some of it looks a bit wet, but you know, depending on when you come here. Um, going to summer, a lot of it will dry out pretty quick. Now, I'm going to head over to the middle of the um, actual uh, park that's in the middle because there's a board there and it tells you a bit about the history of this place. So let's go check that out now. So this is one of the information boards. There's two, well, it's double-sided. This side just tells you a bit about the area and um, the animals that are around here and the birds. Um, it has a little bit of a map. It shows you where we are and um, also this is the actual camping area um, so it shows you where your fire pits are um, this is where I drove in I drove past this last night which is that's that first spot that I showed you tonight right near the entrance then you've got the st stables here that I showed you before you drive around you've got your toilets up here and this is pretty much where I camped and um near this car park and yeah so that's that's pretty much the whole place there if you want to pause it and have a better read you can i'll try i'll have a look at the other side now so then also on this side it tells you all about the history of the logging of the forest and um and they do have some of the equipment here you can have a look at i'll just kind of go down this slowly so if you do want to have a read it tells you a lot about what they used to do here and it even tells you about the area that we're camping in because this used to be a homestead here and um, the guy that lived here actually planted all these trees that aren't actually from around this area and that's why it looks so different um, and it's a really cool just a really beautiful spot and beautiful trees so there's a few more campers to rocking up I've just seen a, a camper trailer going past so anyway We'll, I'll head back now. I'm going to go make some lunch. But, um, oh, this is someone else's setup. For some reason in this episode, the meals seem to be getting easier and easier. I'm about to cook myself some lunch and I've brought along a on-track meal. I've had these in episodes before. They're pretty much just a meal that you heat up and it's ready to go. So let's go in the van and check out what I've got with me. On track meals definitely recommend these if you're you know if you're going hiking or if you're just someone who doesn't like cooking and you want you want real food these are amazing um, and they're not like dried out they're actual real food in the bag that you that easily store away they're very small looking but you get a whole heap in it um, and you'll see that when I serve it up um, so I'm having sweet and sour pork now this takes only about three minutes to heat up three to five minutes depending on how hot you are i suppose you want it and uh like i said real food real food so all you need to do is well i've done these on the episode before is i'm just boiling up some water just going to pop that in and three minutes later i'm going to have a very delicious lunch now that the water has boiled i'm just going to pop my meal in just like that get it covered and get it out in three minutes. Okay, it's time to get this one out and get it dried off. So now all we need to do is rip this open and I'm just putting it on a bed of rice. You can have it straight out of the packet if you want, but I thought why not have a little bit of rice with it and uh, I think that'll go down really nice. Well, I thought I'd come into the middle of the uh, camping ground. This is so beautiful. And um, to give this its taste test. So let's give it a go. Mm. 
these guys don't disappoint. Tastes fantastic. It tastes like, you know, you've cooked it at home. Um, well, that's if you're a good cook, because this does taste good. Uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, no, delicious and definitely recommend pairing it with some rice. I know um, the first time I tried this, I had the chili con carne and I paired that with um, sp uh, spaghetti, not spaghetti, like a pasta. And it was absolutely delicious. So um, yeah, they've got heaps of different meals. Um, I've even got in the van, I've got some steak there that I can have another day. But um, for now, I'm enjoying this sweet and sour pork. And um, it's been a bit of a pork episode, hasn't it? Because we had pork last night and now I'm having it for lunch. But anyway, I'm going to go get into this. Well, that's it for another week, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And don't worry, Adam and Twyla will be back next Sunday at 5 p.m. And we are always on live chat to answer any of your questions. Guys, remember, we have our merch out where we've got hoodies, mugs, T-shirts, and a few other bits and pieces if you want to go check them out. And our latest column is out in GoRV. All right, guys, if you haven't already and you're new to our channel, make sure you go down the bottom and like and subscribe. And until next Sunday at 5 p.m., we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.